Hello, I'm Bill Rafalski and welcome to class number five, Agatha Christie at the movies. I'd like to start by talking about a little known chapter in British history. From 1914 to 1918, Great Britain experienced the largest influx of immigrants in their history. This was mainly due to Belgians fleeing from Germany's takeover. Historians estimated that approximately 250,000 Belgians resettled in Great Britain. When the Germans conquered Belgium in 1914, many of the Belgians lost their homes and their businesses. Belgians came to Great Britain for a fresh start. It's also interesting that in one day, in 1914, 16,000 Belgians immigrated to Great Britain through the port of Folkestone. Belgian towns began to form throughout Great Britain. For example, the town of East Twickenham was known as the Belgian village on the Thames. These immigrants established their own newspapers, shops, hospitals, churches, prisons, and police forces. The areas where the refugees settled were considered Belgian territory. Belgian currency, both bills and coins, were used. The areas were run by the Belgian government. Belgians were also housed with families throughout four nations. It was rare to find a British family that did not take in one or two Belgians as boarders. Today, when asked in Great Britain, the only Belgian that the British can remember and discuss is the fictional Belgian detective Hercule Poirot, created by Agatha Christie. There is only a single monument to the Belgian migration in all of Great Britain. The Belgian and American governments commissioned a statue that is located in London's Victoria Embankment Gardens. What changed in 1918? After the war, the British government wanted their soldiers back and the refugees out. The Belgians had little choice as their British employment contracts were canceled. The British government offered a limited time, one-way ticket back to Belgium for these refugees. The other catch was that the refugees had to leave Great Britain ASAP within 12 months of the published notice to leave. In the end, 90% of the refugees accepted the offer and left. The Belgian government needed Belgian people to return and help rebuild their country. The Bel Belgians that did stay in the UK married Brightons and became British citizens. The Belgians disappeared from prominent view in Great Britain. An actual person from this group of refugees inspired Agatha Christie to create the character of Hercule Poirot. In her town, there was a large number of Belgian refugees. Among those refugees was retired Belgian policemen who settled in Torquay. The retired gendarme, Jacques Ornay, stayed with a Christie neighbor down the road from Greenway, the Christie home. And as a young girl, Christie would occasionally go to the neighbor's home and entertain the refugees by playing the piano. Now to today's movie and discussion. Dame Agatha Christie often used common nursery rhymes as titles for some of her stories and novels. According to the blogger Janet Rudolph on September 10, 2010, Dame Agatha used these nursery rhymes as a rich source for titles as well as themes. Miss Rudolph affirms that nursery rhymes are all about ordinary people conducting disorderly behavior. There are eight examples of crimes by rhymes, using Randolph's term, used by Agatha Christie in her writing. First, Ten Little Indians, also known as And Then There Were None. This Little Piggy, also known as Five Little Pigs. There Was a Crooked House. Sing a Song of Sixpence. One, two, Buckle my shoe. Three blind mice. Hickory dickory dock. How does your garden grow? 
Over the next two weeks, the two TV stories that we will discuss and then watch the video are Five Little Pigs and One Two Buckle My Shoe. Five Little Pigs was broadcast in 2003 and One Two Buckle My Shoe was broadcast in 1992. Both of these episodes were highly acclaimed shows. Both fans and critics liked these two adaptations. The location of Five Little Pigs is South Devon, England, very close to Greenway House, the holiday home of Agatha Christie. Greenway was used before as a setting of other Christie novels, like Towards Zero and Dead Man's Folly. This adaptation of Five Little Pigs was shown on British television in 2003 as part of the Poirot television series. Five Little Pigs was part of Series 9, which starred the character of Hercule Poirot. The series had just hired a new producer who wanted to make feature films, not episodes. The first project chosen was Five Little Pigs. The book Five Little Pigs was written by Agatha Christie in 1942. It was adapted for television by Kevin Elliott. Kevin also wrote the TV adaptation of Death on the Nile that we watched last year in my first class on Christie. The story is about a wrongful conviction. At the beginning of the story, Lucy, the daughter of Caroline Crail, paid a visit to Poirot. Sixteen years before, her mother was hung for the murder of her father, Amyar. While her mother was in prison, Lucy had received a letter from her mother. In the letter, her mother insisted that she was innocent. Lucy asked Poirot to prove that her mother was, in fact, innocent. The director of this film is Paul Unwin, a veteran director of hit British medical dramas like Casualty and Breathless. Unwin considered this Christie adaptation to be a favorite adaptation of his. There were script changes that deviated from the book. Some of the court and police chapters were cut. And for better flow, some of the sections of the book were short. The opening scene of the movie when Caroline Crail is hanged, is not in the book. In the book, she died in prison after one year. In the movie script, flashbacks of summer scenes are used. These flashbacks increase the tragic element of the story. An innocent person was convicted and hung for a crime she did not commit. There were other changes. A homosexual subtext was added. In the book, Philip Blake's infatuation with Caroline is moved to her husband, Amyar, and after a summing up by Poirot, an additional scene was added. This adaptation of Five Little Pigs received strong acclamation. The critics hailed the cinematography and production design. One critic wrote, the glowing flashbacks and gray, subdued present-day scenes were very well done and the director used a handheld camera to emphasize that memory gets muddled with the passage of time. One reviewer said that the use of close-up shots in the present day scenes are superb. The title sequence is considered by many people as the best in the Poirot TV series. Also the musical score by Christopher Gunning is wonderful. Be sure to listen to it. Gunning used a gramophone recording of Alice Bluegown and mixes the song throughout the score with Eric Satie's Nacien No. 1. There are outstanding performances throughout the cast of actors in this story. Gemma Jones, Rachel Sterling, and Toby Stevens were mentioned in most reviews. Edith Day had a hit record of the song Alice Blue Gown in 1920. Listen to a short selection of the song. Alice Blue was named for Teddy Roosevelt's daughter, Alice. In the movie, the character of Lucy, Caroline's daughter, confronted her family wearing 
the dress. Several members of the cast of Five Little Pigs have achieved great success in shows like the HBO crime drama The Wire and the fantasy series Game of Thrones. Mark Warren appeared in two PBS series this year. The first was the historical drama Beecham House and later this year in the Amsterdam-based detective show Vandervelk. To watch the TV show, click on the link below. Enjoy! Next week is our last week. I will be introducing 1-2 Buckle My Shoe, another Poirot mystery. Thank you.